Hi, I'm Anna Raimondi, coming to you from Connecticut today, from my home actually. And I am so excited to be able to have a conversation today with Sherry Salata. Um, we are ready to explore all the wonderful things that she's done and bring it to you and inspire you and, and have fun with it. So um, welcome, Sherry. I'm so glad that you could be with me. Thank you, Anna. Thank you for asking me. Hi, everybody. Sherry is a professional storyteller and world-class producer, oh, big-time producer. She is the founder and CEO of The Support System, a private membership group for awesome women, aren't we all awesome? Dedicated to creating real-life transformation and Salada and Company, her personal development company, offering acclaimed courses and retreats around the world. Her memoir, The Beautiful No, and other tales of trial, transcendence, and transformation is an Amazon editor's choice, best memoir, and an Apple must listen to audiobook. So be sure you get that. Sherry spent 20 years in the land of Oprah, finishing that glorious run as the final executive producer of the Oprah Winfrey Show president of Harpo Studios and president of OWN, OWN as captured in the cable hit series, season 25, Oprah Behind the Scenes. She spends her time today manifesting the life of her dreams, appreciating every minute of the joy ride she's creating and calling in what's next. Well, that's Anna, amazing. That's a mouthful. That's that a is mouthful. a mouthful. But you well, just I will tell you, that. it's every bit of it's true. I mean, this is, I thought I had it good until now. Isn't that wild? So Isn't wild. Isn't that wild? Couldn't have you know, it's, it's, it's just, I don't know, you know, and looking at like what you've done and where you are, you know, it's just, and how you got there is pretty, it's pretty profound. You know, even, you know, I always believe that people come into our lives for a reason, you know, that there's um, a reason you meet certain people. Do you believe that to be true? I totally believe that. So how did, and you know, and Oprah, the whoever does the hiring said no to you in the beginning, and then you wound up on the show. Is that what happened? That's exactly right. Well, I had, I had sent in my, um, at the time, I, I was applying to be a promo producer, which is the, the department that does the commercials for the shows. And I had been, I had been an advertising agency producer. And um, I sent my little reel of commercials in, my VHS tape and my resume. And I got a lovely, lovely response. Thank you, uh, we are not interested. And, and, and it wasn't a huge surprise. I mean, I was like, shoot. It sure felt like I was supposed to be over there because the Oprah show was across the river from where um, I normally worked. And I was like, gosh, it really felt like I was supposed to be there. I'm surprised. So I was disappointed, but I wasn't shocked because producing commercials in advertising for big commercial brands was very different than churning out promos every day for um, a daily television show. So the jobs were very different. The skills I'm sure they thought were very different. And so I wasn't shocked, but I was like, hmm, gee, I thought I was supposed to be there. Then, then Anna, then Anna, with your skills, you know what's coming next. Um, years passed and um, um, I was in, at a very low point in my life. I was like, gosh darn it, I really, can't, I really can't figure out what I'm supposed to be doing. I loved producing, but um, spending all my time on shampoo and hair creams and, you know, Six Flags and, and fertilizer and banks and stuff like that, it just didn't, like once, once I got the craft of producing in about six years, then I was like, I don't care about this stuff. I can't put my heart and soul into this stuff. That was my take. Other people feel differently. And so um, I was just, I was withering away, withering away. And I had, I had left my agency. 
I thought maybe if I freelance, I'll like this more. I was a terrible freelancer. I, I had trouble drumming up work and asking people for work. So I was at a low point. I was out of money. And I was like, oh my God, I'm gonna have to go back to my parents. I'm freaking like 34, 34 and a half, 35. I'm like, ugh, I'm gonna have to go to my parents and like beg them to help me. And I'm like, oh, what a mess. What a mess that I've not made anything of myself by this time. Because in earlier years, people said I had some promise, but I can't make it happen. So I was as low as I'd ever been. And basically, I, I got a big interview at a big agency. They practically hired me in the room. And so I was so relieved. It was going to be big money, big benefits. And um, I went home, celebrated, and waited for the call to start. That never came. So I sunk even lower because I thought, oh, my God, my life is just a mess. And I remember feeling like my hands were open, like I was, I was ready to give up my shenanigans of trying to quickly figure it out, what it was, where I was supposed to be. And shortly after that, it, it might have been days, um, I got a message on my answering machine. And it said, this voice, this is so-and-so from the Oprah Winfrey Show. We were cleaning out a closet and found your reel of commercials and your resume, will you come in here and freelance for us? And that was the beginning of everything. That was, that was like, what? What is happening? It was so wild and crazy. And only later on did I learn that what had happened is a new head of the department had come the person who had rejected me first had left, and she wanted to bring in people with some agency experience, a little bit more style. And she looked at my reel. She goes, bring me reels. And so somebody, probably the secretary at the time, we called them, was like digging out, oh, my God, I got to find more people, and found my stuff. And, and I, I, for, for years, I held on to it on that little resume that had been rejected at first, there was in her handwriting, get her in here. Don't you think that's divine intervention though? Like, you know, Oh yeah. you pray to God and then everybody says, but I didn't get an answer because <laughs> you don't always get it immediately. You get it yeah. when like you were hitting rock bottom. You had to go through whatever you went through so that timing. it's yeah. all timing. And timing so was that, right. right. I mean, I think that's, and it's also like surrender. You know, like you hit rock bottom. So I'm writing a book actually with Sharon uh, Prentice on surrender. You know, sometimes we surrender and we don't even know we're surrendering. Yeah. You know, so that was you saying, oh my God, do I need to move back with my parents? I don't know what to do. It's almost like yeah. it's at that moment you say, take it and do something. That's for sure. That's you know? for sure. And, it's, and, and now I can look back and I see even from the first day I graduated from college and all those failed missteps, I see how one thing led to another. I see how I was in resistance and I was just so busy trying to make things happen and get a good business card that I wasn't even asking myself, are you happy? Does mm -hmm. this feel good? Do you like doing this? And I can, I can look back on with that hard won wisdom now with a lot of compassion and a, and a lot of tenderness and I just feel for that, that 21, 22, 23 year old who just was just on, on a mad dash to figure out what she was supposed to be doing on the planet. Like so many other 20 yeah. something years old kids. Did you bring spirituality to the show or did you become more spiritual by being on Oprah? Well, you know, I was raised Catholic and now I consider that kind of like a nationality. I'm Polish, Lithuanian, Scots, Irish, Swedish, and Catholic. It's kind of like a nationality. There's, you know, there's some understandings I have of it, but it's not my practice. And so I found myself in my 20s as I was on the big grand search for purpose and meaning. I was in the, the aisle of every bookstore in that self-help aisle, reading all the greats, looking for the plan, the program, the answer, the something. 
And I think it was right before I started at the Oprah show, um, just, just shortly before Marianne Williamson had the breakout hit, um, A Return to Love. And, and that was like, it's the first time I had heard spirituality expressed in a way that I felt some physical resonance with. That's and a phenomenal cells, book. My cells lit up. And that experience, of course, and, and I think it was, it, it was a breakout hit because <laughs> Oprah had her on. And it was right before I started working there. And, but once I was there, oh my gosh, you know, forget the makeovers and the celebrities. And, and there were some, I had some fun with that, but oh my God, I feel like I was being paid and promoted and paid to build a spiritual life. And I, it was, it was like, I was a kid in the candy store when it came to that content, because I just wanted to soak everything up. And that really was the gift of that experience for me. That's wonderful. You know, you talk about love you know, and you just radiate it. What, to you, what is love? Oh. Well, my understanding of this has definitely expanded and deepened over these, these decades of my life. And it is really, oh, it's, I'm just getting it so finely honed now. The that it's the power, it is the force, it is, it is the thing, and it is the resonance, it is the vibration, it is the, um, it's not only the thing that spins the planet, it is the thing that beats our hearts, it is the thing that helps us magnetize ourselves to one another to connect. Um, it's the, it is the thing. So is it the, is it the I am, is it divinity, is it the divi divine spark? Yeah, I mean, listen, I think, I, I, well, first of all, words are very powerful, as we know. Um, I love language, I love words. I, 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 we're casting spells on ourselves all the time. And I think you get to decide. For me, love is another word for what some people would say, God. Um, love is the universe. Love is, um, you know, I really think that George Lucas was, was something, onto something. There was, a, there was many layers in, in that Star Wars message about the Force. Mm -hmm. um, but there is, it really... Um, stands for uh, a, a vibration, a, a level of vibration that if we can tap into that and, and stay aligned as best we can, then things start to hum, mm -hmm. we get in the flow, we start to become magnetic, and life starts to look so much sunnier. So has that happened for you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, but... You know, it's a hero's journey for all of us. We're all on a hero's journey. This human thing, the mysteries are hidden. Um, things like, you know, from, from our limited understanding, some things don't make sense. So have I had my dark nights? Yes. Have I made my mistakes? I love it when, when someone asks me, do you have any regrets? And I say, a million, a million. Well, how do you have a life without regrets? Yes, a million <laughs> regrets. But that doesn't mean that I don't see the value of, of what I figured out with all my mistakes. Of course I do, but yeah. Could I, could I have made choices to take the easy path? Yes, I could have. And so now that I know that, I do that now. And that really, what happened for me, Anna, was that to reach, I'm going to call 56 a midpoint. I'm going to call that a middle of life, even though it might be slightly more than that, but it's, it's the middle-ish of life. To reach that point, to have, to have manifested a career that turned out to be, after fits and starts, so epic, and to realize I wasn't happy, 
and I didn't, I hadn't mas manifested a dream come true life. And my daily life experience wasn't very good. It was like, whoa. And now I had been exposed to all the information that it, you know, as much as it lit me up, it was almost like it was waiting in notebooks for me to make time for it. And now that dark night of the soul, that hero's journey moment, that reckoning that I did for myself at 56 has created um, a lightness. And mind you, I, I couldn't have done it without tenderness and compassion. If I had just raked myself over the coals um, for my failures, to fully ma manifest all the possibilities for my life, I I'd have been dead in the water. But I just kept staying tender and compassionate and understanding. And the more I stayed in that space, the more I could begin to look at my life and say, okay, if you're in the middle of life, middle-ish, what else do you want? What else do you want? What do you wanna do? Who do you wanna be? Who are you becoming? Where do you want to spend your time? What really matters to you? What do you know now that you didn't know then? And that's really been the journey, like the last five years. Do you think that um, there was maybe one person, spiritual person, that was on her show that kind of, you know, set that fire inside of you? Did anybody? Yeah, that's such a good question. I mean, everybody, everybody threw a log on the fire. Um, Deepak Chopra and that's seven spiritual laws of success. Log on the fire. Um, Gary Zukov, Seed of Soul, log on the fire. Although sometimes I have trouble understanding him. Log on the fire. Um, you know, Louise Hay, log on the fire. Um, all of them. Logs on the fire, logs on the fire. What lit me up is surprisingly, and they all got me ready. So let me say that, they, they got me so ready. And one night, oh, I was stressed out producing something and I was surfing the web. That's what we called it then. That's how long ago it was. And I stumbled upon Abraham Hicks. And Esther and Jerry Hicks, Esther Channels and Infinite Consciousness um, called Abraham and that has really been my spiritual practice for the last 16 years or so. Um, that is, that's the resonant language for me. You know, and what I say to anybody who's interested, which is, you got to find your resonant language. There are many, 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 many paths to that greater connection to yourself, to your soul, to your inner being, to the force, to the all. What's yours? And, and I, I will say that I did find that for myself quite a, quite a while ago. And it still is the thing every day, every day. It asks nothing of me other than to be aware of my story and what I'm telling myself about my life. And so, you know, you have this great job and you leave. Yeah. And did you have a plan about what you were going to do next? I had I had some things I had some things in order. Um, I knew I wanted to work for myself, um, and I didn't want to work for I didn't want to produce other people. I had produced the best that's ever been on the planet, so no need to do that for anybody else. Um, I wanted to work for myself. I knew it was going to be something mission driven. I knew it would be somehow in personal development. And I just tried a bunch of things. Um, I did a podcast with one of my dearest friends of 30 years, the Sherry and Nancy show. We did that for three years. We had 3 million downloads, lots of, lots of listeners. It was super fun. Um, I did events um, at different places. And um, I started keynoting. And I wrote a book. I wrote a book about the gems. I wrote a book about my failures. I wrote a book about this, this journey through the lens of my life. And that continues to, that experience, a 
of coming up out from behind the scenes and offering my vulnerability and my knowing and my love to people has now become what informs what I do now. Do you have regrets about the first half of your life? Or do yeah, you like I said, like there, I got a million of them. Yeah, but don't I, you think, but regrets in that, yeah, we always think I would do that different, but don't you think they led you to where you had to be? Well, I'm gonna say this. Uh, boy, wouldn't that be great if that was just that? I, I don't think so. I know this is an unexpected answer, but I say this because I think we could all make our life experience so much easier, that we can operate so much in, more in flow, in, in, in concert with the divine feminine rather than the old patriarchy, which is make it happen, make it happen, climb that mountain, do that thing, set that goal, motivate, motivate. It's a very different um, process of creation when you're willing to literally co-create with the other side. Yes, but it also comes, yeah, that's exactly right. But, and the problem we always have is ego, you know? Um, fear. We, yeah, but an ego, but ego, fear is part of ego. Yeah. I have to do this to get there. I have to be afraid of this. Yeah. This may not get me where I need to go. How fast can I be there? And, yeah. and taking the control out of it not that you're not present in it, but saying, okay, I'm going to co-create. Yeah, that's I can't right. do all of this on my own. That's right. And I will tell you, my success in producing was in part because of my willingness to fix, manage, and control everything. So it's like the, 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 my career was feeding that erroneous beast of that I, I was, I alone was keeping the balls up in the air. You know, I was keeping the universe spinning and that I had the power to change the weather. If, and if I had to, I would. Um, there is, there's, there's some funky um, misunderstandings there. And I was coming off a childhood misunderstanding, false belief that achievement and worthiness were interconnected. So you couldn't have stopped me from trying to achieve because I thought that was how you get love. So, you know, shocking that when you get to the summit of all achievements for me in my career and go, I think I have that wrong. I think I was already worthy before I did one diddly do of this. Mm -hmm. So that was that was a big epiphany for me. Yeah, and I think so many people mm -hmm. feel that way, or at least should look at themselves and say, "Why do I want this? What is it all about?" You know, that's important. So, can you speak to us a little bit about the pillar life? Um, well, um, that really is that really is from the work Nancy and I did together a, a while ago. Um, and it really is about just looking at the landscape in your, in your, of your life. I look at, I look at that process a little differently today that I decided for myself, having failed miserably at that concept of work-life balance, I finally decided that that's just not helpful language for me, that, that I will always fail in that construct. And I decided that what I wanted instead was an integrated life. So that's what I've been working on for the last several years, which is the, my, my work is, and my life are very beautifully intertwined. So I might have to meditate for work. I'm in the middle of, I have some meetings, so I wanna make sure on my calendar there's time to meditate so I can regulate my energy and show up with an open heart. Um, and uh, I might be in, in, in a Zoom meeting um, with 
you know, a thousand people in a workshop with me and my English bulldog Dolly is sitting right next to me and the UPS guy comes and I have to say, hang on a minute while she goes crazy. So I just look to weave it all together and not try to keep everything in such a separate bucket like I used to. And how do you bring that to people? Um, you call yourself a transformation doula? Yeah. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, Anna, because here's why. I, I'm not an expert. Um, and I, I have come to see, having sat at the feet of every expert and produced most of them, that we need to become our own experts, our own gurus, meaning sacred teachers. And that all these people that are passing by with books and programs and, and ideas are there to help us stir the pot. And we can see, is this resonant? What do I think? Does this, does this excavate some kind of knowing for me? But in the end, we're putting together our own program. And our own story. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think, I th you know, I love when people talk about working on themselves, you know, not, not running here, there, and everywhere, but kind of keeping it simple. Yeah. You know, if it resonates, you integrate it. If it doesn't, there's a big buffet out there. That's right. And, and you pick and choose, you know, kind of what you do. And how do, how do you bring this to people? Like, do you, do you do groups? How I do it, yeah. Well, here's how I do it. And it's been, because I've been in flow. And rather than just making things happen like I used to, I have been led and guided and synchronicities. And so now, what it looks like today, and I will tell you, 2021 was the best year of my life. And I've had some good years, the best year of my life for a million reasons but mostly because I had achieved that integration. I loved my work so much and I've never felt more in my purpose. So twice a year, I do a 12 week digital experience where I do, um, I start with a new cohort. Um, I'm, I'm in the middle of that interesting, that launch right now. And I start with a new cohort and I do two workshops a week for 12 weeks. Wow, that's wonderful. That takes and, a lot of energy. Yeah. And it's, it's the joy, it, it, I'll keep doing it as long, because here's why I'm doing it. It's not because, again, I'm the big expert and I know the way. It's because I need to keep having this conversation to stay on my own path of transformation. So if I can shine a light to help you, remind you to stay, keep your feet on the path of transformation, oh my gosh, it's like two minutes in one, check, check. I stay yeah. on the path, you stay on the path. And, um, and when I finished my first group last year, which was an, a mystical experience, I realized we needed a, an everyday place to go. So I launched a private membership group called the Support System. And I do workshops in there. I bring experts in. I do a book club in there. We focus on entrepreneurship, on body, on, on everything. Um, so I can take advantage a little bit of my old life and my producerly skills to make that uh, a rich environment. You know and what that's I, it. You know, but what I like so much about your saying, you know, it goes back to pretty much keep it simple. You don't need to, you don't need to complicate, you Absolutely. know, keep it simple. You know, when I was writing um, conversations with Mary, you know, she repeated over and over and over again to me, just keep it simple, keep yeah. it simple. Like you don't need to bring all these other things into it. Look at it straight on, keep it simple and move through it. And I feel like if people like will listen to you, to the words you're saying, simple, the simple stuff, it's all, it's your life. It's living life. Just looking at it from a different perspective. Well, I love that message. And I think that's worth us let me put a big exclamation point on that because with all all the uh the the the, the ev evolving that i have done at warp speed in the last five years i just got that keep it simple lesson maybe six months ago 
where I could feel myself overlaying old frameworks and dizzying it up and you know, twiddling every diddling thing and making it more that. complicated. And I just had that moment where it's like, mm -mm. can't do it. Keep it as simple, as simple as possible, including my life. If my life, if I start with how I manage my life as simple as possible, then my work stays as simple as possible. Mm -hmm. Then my conversations are, um, as simple as possible of the changes that I make in my life and the things I try. And all of a sudden I have acres of space and a piece in my heart that took me forever to find. Yeah. You also become a clear channel, you know, because, you know, this, the universe, God, divinity, whatever you want to call it, is able to move through you because there's less blocking it. Right. And so just, you know, it's hard for people to move out of that complex place. But once you do, it's so freeing. Mm -hmm. I really agree. freeing. I have to ask you, there is a couple of people standing behind you, okay? Mm -hmm. um, there's two people that are relatively young, um, 40s, 50s. Um, the two young ones are somehow connected by, by blood. Um, her name starts with a T, like, um, Tess, um, a name like that. Um, and she's holding the hand of the other person and he, they're related. They're related. Um, but they live in different places and they grow up in different places. Wow. Do you know who I'm talking about? Yes. A name like that. Mm -hmm. um, they're they related, all, but they grew up in different places. They, they're related, they grew up in different places. Um, I don't know if one of them was adopted um, kind of feels like is, something is like one of my, my, my adopted brother, John. And who is this woman? Could it be Virginia? His is that a sister? sister? Okay, no, but this woman is related to Virginia. So this might oh, be, do you know if he had another mother? sister? Did he have another sister? Uh, not, I don't know. He only met them. I only found, um, his biological family for him six months before he died. Um, it might he's, be maybe it's his mother. Okay. Um, because she's with him, but then he's with his adoptive mother as well. Okay. Yes. So, my mom. Okay. And her name begins with an M Marilyn. Okay. Because they're both with she's older. I feel like she's older than this. I don't know if this is his mother. I feel like this could be a sister. Um, I don't know. There's also um, a Lois. These people are all with him. They're with him. He's getting, he wants you to know, um, he's thankful that you found them because he wanted to know what he came from, okay? These people feel very different than the way that he was raised, yeah. okay? Much more rural, yeah. um, you know, more like, people of the land yep. kind of, you know, like I don't, yeah, You're people right. of the land. Um, and he wants you to know that um, he welcomed in this woman um, whose name begins with a T, like a Tess, um, who does feel like a sister. Yeah, he might've had another sister that passed before I knew I had found everybody. Yeah. Um, and so um, he wants you to know that he's eternally grateful that that you did that. Um, and your mother's grateful. Mm. OK, because it was something that she was very um, concerned about. OK, but um, but it's what he needed. And that was something that was almost like his life went in a, went full circle yeah. and you helped him to get there. 
and he loves you very much. That's amazing. Oh, I love him so much. And mom, oh my gosh. They're like, they're, they're, they're all a part of this amazing, amazing, the amazing things that are going on in my life. I can feel them around me all the time. But she's, she's pretty Catholic, huh? Yeah. She feels yeah. very Catholic yes. um, because she's saying, um, you know, I feel like don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. <laughs> you know, there are things you learn that you can somehow integrate, you know, but I feel like you are. You know, I don't feel like you're not. You're not balking at that. You know, you are. And it's pretty beautiful. Oh, that is so sweet. That makes me smile so much. That's what my mom would say. It wasn't all a big way, Sherry. Well, and no, because I, the, the ceremony and, 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 and sacred talisman ceremony ritual of, of that, that Catholic expression profoundly shaped me. I just, my actual relationship with my soul and my, my spirit came from a different language. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's, uh, she's happy about that. Yeah. She's really, she's happy. She's smiling. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. And she's saying you're safe now. You're mm -hmm. safe. And that's important for you to know for some reason you're safe and you're healthy. She's saying, tell her she's healthy. Tell her she's healthy. You know, not just physically, but mentally and spiritually. Mm. She's with you. Is your father still living? Yeah. Yeah, um, because I feel like, you know, she's, he's not going anywhere. Not now. He's still uh, doing his thing, you know. Um, yeah, he's okay, but... Yeah, she's. Did you move around a lot as a child? Yeah, he was in the Navy. Okay. So we moved around, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, because she, uh, she knew what she was getting into, but she didn't know what she was getting into. She really didn't like that. But you know what? It kind of made you who you are, and that's what's so important. Well, I loved having you on today. Thank oh, you Anna, thank you so, so much. much, so much for, for coming on. Um, it was just delightful to speak with you and, and to listen to how you changed, you know, um, that great can change. And you can go from one great thing to another great thing. It's all a matter of perspective. For sure. And where you are. And I thank all of you out there who have listened to this episode today. I hope you will continue listening and you can go to my website at AnnaRaymondi.com and you can look at the other episodes we've done and listen in to them. And in the meantime, God bless you all. And thank you and thank you, Sherry.